All right, the Committee on Finance and Law will come to order. On the roll call, uh, Dr. DeMello? Present. Mr. Enos? Present. And Mr. Fiore is present. We have no student activities to report tonight. Uh, we have a use of facilities report. Any comment, Mrs. Moynihan? Nope, this is just like we normally have. Again, three organizations. Received and placed on file. Second. Second. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed, so voted. Uh, we have two bills payable warrants. First, uh, fiscal year 22 in the amount of $1,067.50. So moved. Uh, second on, on discussion. Uh, so uh, through you, Mr. Chairman, uh, Mrs. Monahan, I did reach out to Superintendent Cabral with the concern of FY22 still carrying forward. And I was hoping that we could get this all finalized sooner than later. Do you have any idea when we'll have all the FY22s finished with? I have put a call into the city auditor's office, but what I have been told in the past is usually there's a certain t deadline or a cutoff, and then it rolls on to another account. So, um, but all the encumbered funds have been for services that mm. we are, were um, taking place in the district. Okay. Is, is there any is there any financial hardship to folks getting reimbursement past a, a certain window? Uh, uh, like, for example, there's one here for. Uh, educational course reimbursement so the 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 teacher goes in takes the course may have started in June or July whatever that may be and concluded in December so you're running over two fiscal years so is there a deadline for the person to submit the reimbursement request? Well, the way we do know, as, as you may be aware, there's a new city ordinance um, for, um, for reimbursements. But for course reimbursements, and this one is specifically probably that one there that you're referring to, is probably the second or third request. So what happens is we do, per the TEA contract, we go ahead and do everybody's first course reimbursement request and then once all of those have been exhausted then we can go into second uh, until the pool of money has been gone so there's really no we um, no responsibility or any fiscal responsibility for the the person um, but again we're following contracts and the city ordinance okay. and also some of the uh, larger uh, holdovers are just uh, things that haven't been invoiced like uh, some of right. our our well, district tuitions. Well, I mean, in my day job, if we have a reimbursement request and it, it's past 60 days, they'll reimburse me, but it's then going to be a 1099 to me as a taxable item. And I'm trying to avoid that from our employees. And I don't know if Mr. Yeah. Enos, if you have anything we to add to that. We don't do that, but um, we have a city ordinance, which right. is a city law. Mm -hmm. And I have mentioned this in the past to the superintendent about people submitting their uh, reimbursements after the window is closed. Right. And, and it, that hasn't been a problem now that now that we've been addressing it with all of our staff we talked about it to the unions it's on all of our reimbursement forms specifically stating that they have 15 days to submit it to to the business office so we can submit it um, in the time frame for the city auditor's office but more than likely this this course was taken in in May or June mm -hmm. of, of this past year right which is which is 22 oh, yeah it, right. which is 22 which right. is already yeah I mean you know I I have no problem Eleven. reimbursing what's justly reimbursed I just want to be within the no, law I agree with you and if it's with after that 60-day window I'm made aware of my day job it will be a taxable item they'll reimburse me but I will be 1099 at the end of the year as taxable that's, so that might be a good incentive so maybe we'll explore that <laughs> it works with me thank you so I did second that mr. chairman all right, uh, so uh, the warrant for fiscal 22 in the amount of 1067.50. All those in favor? Aye. 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 The chair votes aye. All those opposed, so voted. Then the fiscal 23 warrant in the amount of $391,042.98. So moved. Uh, second, uh, but I would like to be recorded as voting present. Uh, this is on page three, it's the amount of 19500 Voucher number 19424. I'll be recorded as voting present on that. Out of the motion. Page 3. Oh, okay. 19.5. Right. Okay. 
Okay, all those in favor signify aye. by saying aye. Aye. Do you have votes aye? All those opposed to the voter. And uh, any facilities update for us, Mrs. Moynihan? Just a quick update that we have um, reminded our building custodians to um, to begin or continue their disinfecting, and we have all of our schools scheduled twice a week, at least twice a week, with using our um, electro electrostatic sprayers to disinfect our schools. But of course, constantly disinfecting high touch points. Received them placed on fire. Second. All those in favor? Aye. aye. Chair votes aye. All those opposed, so voted. Motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed, we're out of here. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in was still there oh say does that star spangled then I yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave Mrs. Fagan us in prayer Lord as we begin this session let us acknowledge your goodness and mercy and ask your blessings on all our deliberations we thank you for this opportunity to be of service to our community and to the young people entrusted to our care and we also uh, have three individuals we would like to remember this evening and ask you for the you know your thoughts and prayers be with these families so we have first of all we have Mr. William Butler, who um, was passed away. Uh, he was at the age of 86. Uh, he involved with many uh, different things in the community, St. Mary's Church, American Legion, Knights of Columbus, and all those things. But we also know him through his son, Bill Butler, who was a city electrician and is often seen in the school department. and is become a friend to everybody so we want to express our sincere um, sorrow to Mr. Butler uh, for the loss of his father so he leaves two two children and two grandchildren the next person is Teresa Hebert her maiden name was Dusham she is the daughter of the late Raymond and Elsie Dusham who also worked for us in the school department whose funeral was not too long ago Mrs. Dusham passed away uh, Teresa was the mother of, was married to Glenn Hebert, was the mother of three children, was also an author writing a book, Special Deliveries, which I knew all about because her children and mine played Little League together. Um, so she also leaves three grandchildren, I'm sorry, five grandchildren along with her three children. Um, I just want to say something. I attended the funeral. I, the love that the people in her family had for her was just unbelievable. And it was a very touching and warm funeral, but she loved everybody, and she was only 65 years old when she passed. So please keep her family in your thoughts and prayers. She's also the aunt of school committee member Nathan Pulowski. So our, 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 our sympathies go out to you and your family, Nathan. And the last thing I want to read, and these are always real tragedies too. On Sunday, January 15th, Rehoboth native and student at Bristol Plymouth Regional Technical High School Dylan Quinn perished in a single motor vehicle accident. Please keep Dylan, his family, and loved ones in your thoughts and prayers. Also our hearts are with the Rehoboth and Bristol Plymouth community as they mourn and try to make sense 
of the loss of young life filled with hope, innocence, and promise. So for all these people, if at some point you just say a prayer for them, I'm sure they're, they're all with God, and keep them, keep them in your thoughts and prayers. So a moment of silence, please. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Fagan. And roll call, right? Yes, please. Okay. Mr. Pulowski. Present. Mr. Enos. Present. Mr. Fiore. Present. Mrs. Fagan's present. Mr. Vieira's absent. Mr. George. Present. Mr. Laura. Present. Our Chairman, Dr. DeMello. Present. And Mayor Sharon O'Connell. Present. Thank you. Thank you. Approval of the minutes of December 21. And 2022 second. and January 4th, 2023. Is there, was there a second? Second. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None opposed, so voted. Thank you. There is no student advisory committee report this evening. Uh, is there any public input? Okay. Then we have a presentation from the Performing Arts Department. Mr. Cabral, did you, uh, Superintendent Cabral, did you want to introduce? I would be honored to. So I, I feel kind of selfish in having this presentation tonight, knowing that the Performing Arts Department just got off a very busy month of December, where, where it, it feels like every night they had a concert. And then to ask Mr. Beltram and Mrs. Caleri, who work very hard in our Performing Arts Department, to put on this presentation tonight for the school committee. Again, I feel a little selfish, but I also think it's a great opportunity for Corey and his staff to share the amazing work that takes place behind the curtains in the Performing Arts Department. So Corey has done a great job since overtaking or overseeing the department. I'm very proud of the work that he's accomplished, and I'm very proud of the lofty goals that he has set, which he and I go back and forth about what percentage of students that we want to see participating in the performing arts K through 12. And I feel very confident that under Corey's leadership that we will reach that goal during his tenure in Taunton. So without further ado, Corey, the floor is yours and please you know, share with us the outstanding work that's taking place under your leadership. Uh, thank you for that introduction and uh, I just thank you to the whole school committee uh, for letting me take the time to, to present. Um, so I've kind of backtracked and um, added some stuff from during COVID and then what we've done to move forward from COVID. Um, there it goes. Um, so just a quick overview, uh, our general music classes, uh, we service uh, grades pre-K to seven and then, um, so, and then into the middle schools, grades five and seven, five, six and seven. Uh, we in start introducing ukulele and piano into those classes. Uh, those classes are in modules, so they'll get 20 days of uh, general music, so they try to, to add in as much as they can. It's kind of a jam-packed, like, quick session of it, but uh, they do general music and then add in ukulele and piano as best they can. Um, and then it, you see here, too, some of the John Fireman uh, materials. Uh, we're using that, uh, First Steps is one of the books here. Uh, we're using that in pre-K and first, uh, pre-K through first grade. And then conversational solfege, we're using that through uh, second grade up into the middle schools into seventh grade. And it's all language-based, uh, meaning like music language-based uh, acquisition. So they're listening, they're copying, then they start um, reading and copying, and they end up uh, writing and creating music. But it's within a, a set parameter. So it's age appropriate <coughs> for the grade level, and it progresses all the way up through into the seventh grade. Uh, seventh grade is where we stop general music. That's why I indicate seventh grade. And you can see uh, we have one of our pre-K classes here, just an example. Um, they're using scarves and they're moving with music in that, that image there. Uh, again, this is more of the fireman materials that we're using. On the left side is the first steps. So that is what a pre-K through first grade class would have. And that lesson, um, is done in a 40 minute class period. So every 40 every class period, once every six days, they'll end up going through that whole list of pitch exploration, through uh, simple songs, all the way down to the song tales. So that whole process happens each six day cycle. And they progress through that over the, the years into first grade. And then on the right side is the conversational solfege part. That was the other book starting in second grade and on. 
and you can see kind of the process. They start with readiness, so they're just echoing. And this might be in a game, or it might be just you know, saying musical patterns back and forth, whether it's rhythmic or tonal patterns. And they progress into reading and then finally writing. And they keep doing this within each unit. So they'll start off with like quarter notes and eighth notes, or do, re, mi uh, tonal patterns. And they progress through more rhythms and tonal, tonal patterns as they keep going on through the program. So this is uh, the musical workout, is what he calls it. And it's, it's been researched. And he's part of the uh, Hart School of Music, so it's had 30 years of research behind it. So this program has been great for us. So um, going on to our performing ensembles, we have chorus starting in fourth grade. So fourth grade chorus is a pull-out program. So they get pulled out of their uh, classes for fourth grade chorus once every six days for 40 minutes. Um, middle school chorus, we have uh, middle school chorus in five, sixth, and seventh grade. Uh, going to the high school, eighth graders and ninth graders are in the mixed choir. 10 through 12th grade are in concert choir, and then um, select choir. Mr. Gardo has select choir, which is the premier group or the top group performing group, and that's 10th through 12th grade. And you can see we have some elementary on the top and uh, one of our middle schools performing. This was this past December. Uh, here's our um, high school groups, mixed choir, <coughs> concert choir, and select chorus. And you can see the progression um, just in kind of their outfits and um, their pr presentation as they mature. Uh, going on to band, uh, our band program starts in the middle schools at grade five. Uh, so fifth grade is beginner band, so they've, they've never had an instrument before until fifth grade. Uh, we start doing reading, um, and that's the focus of our, our beginning band program is the music notation reading skills. So once we build those fundamentals, um, we move them on to eighth grade band. So five, six, and seven meets every, uh, every three days <coughs> on a rotational cycle. Um, it's also a pull-out program. They pull out of their modules. So they'll go to either art class for two days, and then the third day they go to band. Or they go to wellness for two days, and the third day they go to band, and so on. So depending on the module, it rotates as their module goes, but band pulls out every three days. Um, eighth grade band is the first year they get band every day. So once they get to the high school, it's a scheduled class. They meet, you know, uh, this year with our new, new uh, schedule at the high school, they meet either A block or F block, so first or last. Um, and then they go to their cores in the middle of the day. Uh, concert band, so once they move on from eighth grade, um, most students are in concert band, so ninth through twelfth grade. Symphonic band is the premier group, so that's ninth through twelfth grade. Some students make it in in ninth grade, but mostly it's uh, tenth through twelfth grade. Uh, Mr. McKenzie has jazz band after school, so um, that meets, it's 9th through 12th graders that that's open to, that meets, actually it's meeting right now at the high school. Um, marching band, marching band you'll see on the football fields and at the parades, that's a combination of both the concert band and the symphonic band. And then we have some small student run ensembles, I don't have a picture of them here, but we have some of the, like a saxophone choir. Um, uh, we have a uh, double reed choir, flute choir. Um, so we have quite a, a, a wide range of small ensembles that, that the students kind of run themselves. So Mr. McKenzie gives them some guidance and they kind of, they practice on their own. Um, Ms. Martin, one of our middle school uh, general music teachers, she does the flute choir. So some of them are run by another adult, but most of them are just run by students themselves. Um, here's some pictures of our <coughs> high school band. So there's eighth grade and concert band here. We've got jazz band and symphonic band here. Um, I, I pulled up some enrollment numbers. Um, so this is middle school band. So um, Mrs. Cleary here, she's in charge of Friedman primarily and a little bit of Parker too. Um, and you can see our numbers. I pulled the numbers from before the pandemic and then into the pandemic, and then current. So you can see where we were kind of gaining steam, and then the pandemic hit, and there's an indication of no band. We didn't start uh, fifth grade beginners that year because of COVID, uh, with things not being clear of what we should be doing. So we didn't start any brand new beginners because that's a lot of like hands-on and close quarters, so we, we ended up holding off. So you can kind of see where we're starting to recover from that missed year, but. Um, 
it ha it's not back where we want it, but it's, it's getting better. We're back up to 300. We were at 358, 377 before the pandemic. So chorus, um, our chorus numbers, I don't have all the data from chorus. Chorus used to be uh, supplementary in the middle schools. So uh, it would be the general music teachers would teach chorus. So I don't have uh, the data from that because it wasn't a, a class that was graded in school brains. Going forward, it's now a pullout program just like the band. So like I had said before, they go to two days of their module and then the third day they go to chorus. So now I have more numbers starting here going forward. Um, chorus didn't run with COVID, so that's where the no chorus part is happening there. So we got some work to do to build up our numbers with chorus, but I think, uh, I think we'll get it, get it going soon enough. Um, Ms. McCullough is our middle school choral director. She actually rotates through all three schools, so, and she does uh, two elementary courses on top of that. So she's very busy. <laughs> um, here is our uh, band. Uh, chorus and theory, so all our high school ensemble, ensembles and classes. Um, so you can see the, the chorus on the top here. Um, it's, we've taken a little bit of a, a dip with COVID. Um, we're gonna see more of a dip with the, the numbers coming up from the middle schools, but I'm hoping to be able to bring those numbers back up sooner than later. Uh, the band numbers are similar. You can see where the, we kind of dipped a little bit. Um, there's a new class added in. There's a 9 through 12 uh, beginner band. So with the change in the schedule, we were able to have some more flexibility and we added a 9th through 12th grade beginner band. We have 12 students currently that have never taken band before and are in the high school and has signed up to learn a new instrument. So learn an instrument for the first time. Um, and then our theory and guitar classes. Uh, theory and guitar, we try and cap around 20 just because that room is a smaller room. Um, you can see at the end here, guitar is ballooned to 36 students. We actually made, it two sec made two sections and we were able to do that with our schedule change. So we're, we can offer two different sections of guitar to be able to, um, be able to offer that to those students. Um, some of the things that uh, we're doing with festivals and travel, we have the Southeastern Massachusetts Music Educators Association. So uh, the junior district, senior district for chorus and band and our composition contest. So we had a student this year uh, compete in the composition contest, Caio Dos Santos Amato. Uh, he's the third time winner of the composition contest. And um, so he's been you know, recognized for creating his own work of band music. So he, that means like he wrote for every instrument you would see on stage for concert band. So it's pretty cool. Uh, I can't do that. <laughs> it's beyond my abilities. Um, but uh, we also have students that have auditioned for senior district for both band and chorus and junior district for band and chorus. Um, those students uh, audition, they have to prepare a piece, they audition, and if accepted in the festival, then they get to travel and perform with other students from around the South Coast area. Um, Allstate, so Allstate is an extension of junior and senior district. Uh, students that score high enough on the rubric, they get recommended for Allstate, and we actually have four students <coughs> that are auditioning on Saturday for Allstate. So that's exciting to be able to ha represent the South Coast and Taunton on the state level. So that's pretty cool. Um, MICA, so uh, the band is going to perform at MICA where they pr practice and get judged and get a rubric, they, they're <coughs> scored on a rubric. So that's another, um, that's, that's open to the whole band because the entire band travels and performs at the MICA Festival. And then last, we're gonna combine our concert band and symphonic band, and we're looking to travel to Disney this year in April. And so Mr. McKenzie has uh, decided to combine the two bands and we'll hopefully be able to play at Downtown Disney and perform at Downtown Disney. Uh, as addition to that, they also have a clinic, so then they perform for some judges and they get critiqued and uh, they're ranked on a rubric. So that's also the added piece to that. Performances, uh, we have a long list of what we're doing um, on a yearly basis. We have our typical fall and spring performances. This year we added uh, the American Band Joint Concert. So um, I'm part of the American Band, so it's an adult concert band. So we brought them in with the help of the uh, Taunton Cultural Council. 
and uh, the symphonic band played, and then the American band played. So it was a, kind of an exchange concert or a joint concert. Um, we're sending many groups to Lights On. Uh, typically, we have our jazz band, our flute choir performed, mm -hmm. the clarinet choir performed, saxophone choir, brass choir, the five, sixth, and seventh grade chorus, and uh, the select chorus. So the select chorus didn't perform this year, but they perform many years, have been performing many years in a row. Uh, Select Chorus also performs for the Rotary Club at the high school. We, ha we do perform at the Christmas and Memorial Day Parade, the marching band, um, at the halftime shows, all city. So here's a picture of all city concert from last year. We ended up moving it to the field house and we were able to put all of the students out on the, the field house floor. In years past, we've used the auditorium and you'd have to cycle out students from the elementary, get them off stage, get the middle school students on stage. This way, we had them all lined up out on the floor and you could see the whole range from five through 12 chorus. We did the same thing with, um, sorry, four through 12 chorus. We did the same thing with five through 12 uh, band, or actually we did sixth grade or seventh grade band last year. So we started with seventh grade. Um, and then, uh, we're used, we had a couple other things that we started more recently, a mentor-mentee band, and um, we offer an August band camp, both for the middle school and the high school students. So that's a range of what we're working on yearly for performances. Uh, here's an example of All City. Um, I'll play, I'll do the band one. So this is the, sorry. This, this is the combined of both, uh, all, all the bands that were at the All City Band. Um, they were a little nervous at the end to see if we could do the, the, the retardando to slow down together and we were, weren't sure exactly if it was going to happen but everybody slowed down. We had three conductors so Mrs. Cleary, Mr. McKenzie and Mrs. Montana so that we were trying to keep them all together. <laughs> once, you get, once the middle school kids get going they just go so we were, we were trying to keep them together. <laughs> uh, we did the same thing with the choruses. Um, so we had the elementary, the middle school, and the high school sing a combined piece at the end of the uh, middle school, or the chorus, uh, all city day as well. And I conducted elementary, we had three conductors again. Mr. Legardo was in the middle, Ms. Uh, McCullough was on the other end trying to keep them all together as well. Um, so we're, we're making plans to do that again this year in the same type of fashion. We're gonna use the field house again. Um, so that'll be in March. Um, just some images here of uh, the band uh, during the parade this past year. We had the middle school parade, uh, the middle school band. So this was the uh, seventh grade band into the eighth grade band. And then the other side is the concert band and symphonic band, the, high the rest of the high school band. Um, again, here's the um, halftime show that Mr. McKenzie performs with the concert band and symphonic band. Uh, Mrs. Cleary got all the shirts, I believe, right, <laughs> for the middle school band camp. So this is middle school band camp at the bottom here. Uh, some recruitment things that we're working on. 
Um, so we've been working uh, to get more students signed up and involved in chorus and band at the middle schools. So we've been having the high school students uh, log on on Google Meet with the middle school classes just to kind of showcase what they do and what uh, band and chorus are at the middle schools and the high schools. Um, we do an elementary fourth grade tour of Taunton, so we do an instrument demo. Uh, every June we go around and we play and demonstrate all the instruments to the fourth grades at each of the elementary schools. During COVID, uh, Mr. McKenzie had the students create uh, videos, so these are all just clip or just a screenshot of all the videos that uh, students were recording of themselves to help recruit other elementary uh, and middle school students into band. Um, Mr. McKenzie has created a band council, so this is like a student council but for band. So it's uh, student run, they have a few subcommittees like social media, graphic design, uh, mentoring, um, things like that. Uh, so the mentoring program is the high school students are teaching middle school students on their instrument through Google Meet. So once a week, they're getting a, a private student, le a private instrument lesson or a music lesson through Google Meet. Mr. McKenzie, um, Mrs. Cleary, Ms. Montana, um, they all kind of manage and take turns of running the Google Meet, and they put them into breakout rooms. So there's always uh, a teacher managing it, and that way, if there's students that need a question, have a question to be answered, they, there's a, a teacher that's involved in the Google Meet as well. But this has been successful. Last year, we even uh, had the students perform with the high school students, so at the, our spring concert last year. And then uh, we have our parent-run band boosters. You can see the mattress sale right here. They've been uh, doing a lot of fundraising, and that fundraising goes primarily to help for our trips when we travel. So it kind of offsets the cost per student um, to pay for the trip. So it'll go towards the whole group. So whatever they raise, they take that and, and shave that off the price of the trip for the students. Um, instrument equipment, um, last year we uh, brought to the school committee uh, instrument loan policy. So this kind of just, it's, it mimics the Chromebook stuff where it, it helps protect our investment of uh, any damage to instruments. That doesn't happen typically, but just in case, uh, as you can see, we have 340 band instruments available to students. Um, to loan from the school. So that kind of just went along with that. Some of the, here's a, a kind of the listing of what we have available for wind instruments. We have percussion instruments for uh, concert bands. So like we have timpani and bass drum. So there's even more instruments in terms of percussion, but the 340 is for like wind instruments that students play and borrow from us. The percussion instruments stay in school uh, for the most part. Um, we have uh, a new piano at the high school. Showcase Cinemas uh, donated, were emptying up their lobbies and they had donated a whole bunch of pianos. So we have a baby grand piano that Showcase Cinema donated to the high school. So we've been using that for all our choral concerts now. Um, last year, the drama program put on Wizard of Oz. So here's some just quick shots of it. If you want to see more, the link, um, our drama director, Ali Golder, has a whole uh, range of photos from the show last year. It was pretty cool because, so like Mrs. Cleary, myself, we played in the pit with a bunch of other music teachers from the district, um, and Mr. McKenzie conducted the orchestra pit. Um, and then the students are all performers. Uh, the Munchkins, which was cool, the last time around that we did Wizard of Oz, the leads were Munchkins from fourth grade that we pulled up to the high school to perform. And so now we have a new uh, batch of munchkins that have, are hopefully, <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> that are hopefully getting interested in our drama program. So we're trying to make that connection across the levels into the middle schools and the elementaries. And then last, um, some of the things that we're looking to explore for the future, um, some more non-performing um, electives at the high school. So that would be like a music eight, so extending our general music classes up into the, the high school to eighth grade. Uh, general music, we service all students up until seventh grade, and then it stops, and then they have to elect to take us uh, and take one of our classes. So that the music eight would be another general music class that would extend and give them more options to the high school for taking a class, if, even if they don't want it to be in band or chorus. Um, adding a piano class, we don't offer a piano right now, a lot of students I've heard asking about playing piano, but that doesn't always fit into the band program or the choral program. 
um, and expanding our guitar and theory class sections. We have those sections running already. Um, there's a, there's an, it seems like a need to add more sections for guitar. That's been a popular class for students. Um, we get students that are not in our band program whatsoever that have signed up to play in guitar class. Um, and then one of our middle school teachers, um, she's into songwriting and more of a modern band, so some of her thoughts were um, Mrs. Snow, our Parker general music teacher, was talking about, uh, she also teaches theory class at the high school, so she starts our, her day at the high school and then goes over to Parker. So some of her thoughts were a modern band or a songwriting class, um, just getting those students that don't fit into the performing ensembles that we already have an opportunity to play or create music. Um, a performing arts center, I put this up, but it's, it's, we're running out of space is what I, what I mean by that at the high school. So our, our class sizes in the band room are very large and just the way it's organized where we have to haul percussion equipment out from down six steps because we're kind of down into the basement there. So getting that so closer to the stage would be better, you know. So in the long run, if we run out of room in the band room, that would be nice to be able to move the band room closer to the stage so that it would be easier to move equipment, things of that nature. Um, also with, with our theater spaces, just over time we're starting to need some more upgrades in terms of lighting and sound. Um, we have a new projector going into the auditorium at the high school. They're working on that right now with upgrading our sound. Um, lighting at Martin. So we have uh, some outdated equipment over at Martin. Friedman, we need a few little updates. We've already been working on updating some of the lighting systems over there uh, with a new house lighting system last year. So things like that. Um, and then one of my other thoughts about recruitment was um, bringing the entire fourth grade to the high school <laughs> to hear the band and chorus. So, you know, um, over the years, I've, I've, taking, I've taken our fourth, some of our fourth grade classes when I was teaching here at Pohl and over at Hopewell in East Taunton. I've t I brought them to the Rhode Island Philharmonic, the fourth graders, and they played recorders with the R Rhode Island Philharmonic from the audience. And a lot of our band students talk about that experience now um, our, that are in our program at the high school now and being able to see the, the Rhode Island Philharmonic. So it, this would be more of an in-house concert for students to see the high school students performing and add to our recruitment efforts. Um, and then you can see the picture of some of our seniors uh, and last year we were able to get them stoles for graduation. So they had the pink for performing arts. Uh, when I graduated URI I had a pink tassel, so pink seems to be the color for performing art. So thank you. <laughs> well thank you for that excellent presentation. Um, it's, it's important that our kids have access to the performing arts and it makes for a well-rounded education. Uh, are there any comments or questions, Superintendent Cabral? Okay, let me start over here then. Mr. Pulaski, did you have your hand up? Okay. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, thank you so much for the presentation and just in general, thank you for all that you do. My son Jack's been in the band since fifth grade. He's a senior now and, and he loves it. It's really been important to him and it's, it's been a joy watching it and it's, it's amazing all that you do. So thanks so much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mrs. Fagan, did you have your hand up? No. It was oh, Mrs. I'm sorry. Fiori, I'm Mr. Fiori, sorry. please. Yeah, I'd like to hear a little bit about the Solfege program. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Solfege was the skill of translating uh, tune into the notes of the scale and it's either a very difficult thing to learn or it's the subject of a genetic natural gift which I happen to have and uh, I'm always curious as to how people learn it. So yeah uh, at the, the elementary level we do a lot of mimicking so it would be non-syllables or nonsense syllables <coughs> so it would be on la as just um, a nonsense syllable so you'd sing different pitches or different notes on la and have the kids echo, so it's all audiation. There's no notation in front of them, so they're all using their, their just listening and listening skills and copying. And then from there, you start adding the do re mi syllables, so the solfege syllables. They copy those patterns using the solfege, and then we go from listening and copying orally to reading it. 
And so they see what those sounds look like on the paper. And so we get that spatial reference of, you know, do is lower than so kind of thing. And we go forward from there where they, they write it, and then they create their own patterns. And we use a very narrow pattern of they only get three notes at a time or a very narrow um, two rhythms at a time kind of thing. So it, it doesn't, it's not throwing everything at them all at once. Uh, and you get that they're able to create with either a quarter note and two eighth notes or create with three different pitches and we build from there. So that kind of thing. So it's slow and over time. And we, in the fire oven materials, focus on past, present, future. So I would try and focus on doing a game or activity when I was doing fourth grade general music of something that was coming up in the future. So the game that I was playing that they had to sing had the pitches of what I was going to teach later on in the next unit. So I'm prefacing what I'm doing now, tricking them into learning it, and then when I put it in front of them, they're already kind of familiar with it. So that's kind of the process that was that Fire Oven lays out. Which give me a manual and I can go. Like that's that it was it was great when I finally found it and be able to use it. Thank you. Are you all set, Mr. Fiore? Yes, thank you. Okay. And then Mr. George. I just want to thank you for that presentation, Corey. That was great. Um, didn't know there was so much offered at the high school and at all levels, really. Um, what really intrigued me was the beginner band and the guitar lessons, because for people that are into music and may not have that opportunity, you know, at older ages, that's a, it, it can be expensive to, you know, get that opportunity. And for us to have that in the school system so that maybe they're not comfortable being in a band, but they can just, you know, try to pick up a new craft. I know I have tried to make music and can't play an instrument to save my life. My uncle got that ability. But um, that, that is definitely a class I would have been in. Just thank you for you know, bringing that to our students and being so passionate about it. Yeah, thank you. OK, thank you. <coughs> Chairman DeMello. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you so much to both of you for being here tonight in a very well-rounded presentation. Um, I, I believe we can accommodate your wish list. I, I think it's minimal. I mean, the lighting and uh, the band room close to the stage, I don't know what that involves, but I'm sure we can work on that. And bringing the fourth grade to the high school, I'm sure that's definitely manageable. So I, I think as a committee, we'll definitely support you there. Uh, I, I just have one ask, and I don't ask educators for anything, but just one ask. Secretary Fig and I go through this every time. We want to be at all these events, and some of my committee members also want to be there. Is there a comprehensive list you could share with us, with the public, so we know when this is all happening. I know there's so much going on, but mm -hmm. I know there's something coming up in March that you mentioned, yep. uh, something that's definitely, uh, it's, it's free, right? I mean, everything's free. Yep. So I think the public at home would love to attend these affairs, you know, and you know, through social media, through the city website, uh, through the school committee website, uh, we could you know, fill the field house if it's not already filled. But anyway, uh, I think that's the only ask I have, and it's just to get some type of list I know it's on calendars, and, and the superintendent reminds me all the time, but if we press on a particular date on the calendar, there's like 15 different things going on throughout the whole city. So this is, I think, important to uh, kind of get out there and publicize. So that's my only ask from you, mm -hmm. and I appreciate your presentation tonight. Thank you so much. Thank you. Superintendent Cabral. Thank you, sir. Corey, outstanding presentation. And uh, just to remind everyone at home, you know, Taunton Public Schools, we're a comprehensive school system. So I'm proud of the work that we're doing with regards to academics. We have outstanding athletic programs. You just heard about our amazing performing arts programs. And we have a robust Chapter 74 vocational program. So for students at Taunton High School or kids in the Taunton Public Schools, there's many opportunities and there's a lot of access. And what you do with those opportunities and what you do with that access can really set you on a path to success down the road. And what I really appreciate about Corey since he's taken over the program, he doesn't settle for status quo. You no, know, Corey always aims to improve and always realizes that it's not good enough. So I, I appreciate the focus on continued improvement. And what I'm really impressed with, uh, based on the presentation, because we haven't met in a while, is the, the modern techniques or the modern approaches that you're applying, whether it's via Zoom, which I know many of us, when we hear Zoom, we, we cringe, but taking some practices during the pandemic and utilizing them today to, as a recruitment tool you know, in the use of social media. So I cannot commend you enough 
in this committee, uh, we've been very outspoken about the work that we've done to make sure our facilities are the greatest when it comes to sports. And also, you probably don't hear enough from Mrs. Uh, the Assistant Superintendent and myself, Assistant Superintendent Moynihan and myself, regarding the work that we do around our theaters, because we want to make sure that our performing art spaces are just as amazing as the athletic fields that our kids play on. So we will make sure that Corey, Mrs. Kuleri, our students and our staff, that they have what they need to thrive in our community. So, so thank you. All right, thank you. So if there's nothing further, we thank you very much for joining us this evening. Thank you. Thanks. All right, we will move on to the superintendent's report. Thank you, Madam Mayor. So in your packet, uh, you should have my superintendent's report, which I have two items that I'll, I'll read to you, and then the other two I'll speak to. So the Tom Public School District Community Forum, I'll provide you with a quick update. So on Wednesday, January 11, 2023, the Taunton School Committee held their second school committee public forum at Taunton High School. Earlier this school year, the first forum was held at, in the Benjamin A. Freeman Middle School Auditorium on Wednesday, September 28, 2022. During the forum, those in attendance received an overview of the Taunton Public School Strategic Plan, which covers 2022 to 2027. It's a five-year strategic plan. We reviewed our mission statement, our vision statement, and our theory of action. We also shared numerous highlights and accomplishments from the 2021-2022 school year. In, in addition, participants were also given a sneak peek into the work that's currently underway throughout the district. During the public portion of the forum, caregivers and community stakeholders were able to share their views and concerns on all matters related to education. In addition to voicing views and concerns, community stakeholders and caregivers also provided suggestions on how to refine areas that could benefit all students. So in response to our first forum, the Taunton Public School District, we were able to address technology concerns that were brought to our attention. We were able to improve traffic congestion at Taunton High School that was shared during the first forum. And we also provided the public and the school board with uh, staffing data and we discussed uh, new Taunton Public Schools professional development plan. So that is just some highlights regarding the forums. I thought the last forum was, was excellent and I look forward to the next forum which will be held in the spring at Martin Middle School. I'd also like to just share uh, something that I'm very proud of and it kind of echoes some of the work that Corey and Mrs. Kaleri mentioned. Taunton High School student was awarded first place at the Southeastern District of the Massachusetts Music Educators Association Composition Contest. I am pleased to share that Taunton High School senior Caillou Dos Santos Amado was recently awarded first place at the Southeast, of Southeastern District of Massachusetts Music Educators Association Composition Contest. The Composition Contest offers students the opportunity to engage in musical composition, share their work with others, and advance their compositional learning and craft. Senior Caillou Dos Santos Amado earned first place for his submission, Arabian Rhapsody, at the composition contest that was held Saturday, November 19, 2022, at King Philip High School. He was inspired to write the piece while learning about the Arab culture during one of his history classes. It should also be noted that this is the third consecutive time that he has won the award. In addition to placing first in the CMAC, CME, the SEMMEA Composition Contest. He was also selected as third chair on alto saxophone to play at the Southeastern District of Massachusetts Music Educators Association Senior Festival that was recently held on Saturday, January 7, 2023 at the Somerset Berkeley Regional High School. He was one of four saxophonists selected from the Southeastern Massachusetts region. On behalf of the entire district, I want to congratulate Caillou for his outstanding achievement. Lastly, I just want to share with the committee that Caillou will be attended, attending, or he's accepted, he has been accepted to State University of New York at Fredonia, where he hopes to further his education in music and minor in music performance. I've also provided you with a list of the students who made all state, and I've also provided you with a list of the students who qualified for the Senior District Music Festival. The Junior Music Festival will be held in March. So out of the 2,800 students at Taunton High School, 24 qualified for states and four students qualified, I'm sorry, 24 qualified for the Southeastern Massachusetts Senior Music Festival, and while four students also qualified for the state, uh, at the state level. So we're, we're very proud of our students. And again, you know, we have a robust performing arts program at Taunton High School. 
And last but not least, I think it was a well-deserved and long overdue. Our ba baseball and softball team, state champions, received their state championship rings last week. And on the back of your, my superintendent's report, I provided you with a list of all the softball players and all the baseball players. You know, very proud of our student athletes. It's a great accomplishment. You know, some of our student athletes had three rings, some had two rings, and some have one ring. And I reminded them, if someone asks you which one's your favorite ring, the response is always the next ring. So we look forward to kicking off that spring season shortly. And again, we're state champs until someone knocks us off. So con that concludes my report. Thank you, Superintendent. Uh, do we want to receive them? Receive them, place them file. Sorry. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. None opposed, so voted. Thank you. Administrative business. Uh, any issues with the staffing report that need to be addressed? Received and placed on so, file. Seconded. seconded. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Not opposed, so voted. Uh, and we have a field trip request. Are we addressing that this evening, Superintendent? Motion to approve. So there Second is a motion it. to approve that with a second. Any discussion? discussion? Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mayor. So, uh, of course, we just heard uh, from uh, Mr. Corey Beltran uh, how some of these students are ending up in Florida, I guess, in a couple of weeks. Uh, and, and I fully support this. I, I just want to preface my remarks. I fully support this. But I, I just want to be clear that when this gets to our stage of approval, there have been many steps taken uh, for collecting monies and so forth. Did we have a preliminary on this? Yes. We did? Yeah. Okay, and at that point, what did we approve? Did we approve then the trip itself? To, yeah, then to continue with the process. Okay. All right, I just want to make sure because I keep getting flashbacks to an event that took place a few years ago, I and I just want to make sure <laughs> that uh, we are protecting our students and families of their hard-earned money. So that's all my discussion, and... Thank you. Thank so you, there is a motion and a second to approve. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None opposed. So voted. Thank you. Subcommittee reports. Finance and Law Subcommittee, Mr. Fiore. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Finance and Law met this evening with myself, Dr. DeMello, and Mr. Enos. Uh, we uh, received and placed on file a use of facilities report. We had uh, two bills payable warrants, one for fiscal 22 in the amount of $1,067.50, and another for fiscal 23 in the amount of $391,942.98. Dr. DeMello has to be recorded as present on the second one because there's an item related to his employer, Bridgewater State University. And then uh, we had a facilities update in which uh, Mrs. Moynihan reported that uh, the custodians are undertaking a comprehensive program of sanitizing, including uh, using electrostatic devices as well as uh, cleaning fluids and so forth. And then the meeting adjourned. Motion to accept the report. Second. Thank you, Mr. Fiore. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None opposed, so voted. <clears throat> Next, we have the elementary subcommittee report. Mr. Laura. Thank you, Madam Mayor. The uh, subcommittee of myself <laughs> and Mr. Nathan Pulowski met this evening with the subcommittee. Uh, <clears throat> and the top topics of discussion were the presentation of the E. Paul School Elementary Improvement Plan uh, presented by the school principal, um, talking about the morale in the school the working together to improve students capabilities learning uh, a very positive presentation uh, which was highlighted with the um, the school climate how well they're working together now that they're spending more hours in the classroom kids are learning there's more correlation with the teachers working with the administration to improve the quality of education that the students are receiving, and also the various uh, projects which they're, which they're implementing to ensure that the students have an overall broad educational experience at that level of education. All right, excellent, thank you. Is there a motion? Motion to, to accept the report. 
Second. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None opposed, so voted. High School Subcommittee, Mr. Pulowski. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, this evening, the High School Subcommittee met, uh, including myself and Mrs. Fagan. Uh, Stephen Vieira was absent. Uh, the focus of the meeting was the Parker Middle School prioritization submission presented by Principal Mike Byron. Um, he highlighted that they've uh, implemented new curriculum across the board for social studies, ELA, math, and science. Uh, they've made improvements in social emotional supports with the addition of adjustment counselors and team leaders. Um, so their, their primary focus has been, um, you know, they, they, they've seen great improvements uh, since bouncing back from the pandemic. Uh, he said they are moving forward with focus on instruction, uh, taking care of the social emotional health of their students and uh, their data shows that they are back or above pre-pandemic levels. Thank, Thank you. you, Mr. Pulowski. Motion to accept the report. Second. Motion being seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. None opposed, so voted. Committee of the Whole, Chairman DeVille. Thank you, Mayor. On Wednesday, January 11th, uh, uh, after concluding the wonderful event of the ring ceremony to our softball and baseball teams, we had a uh, public forum, the second of three, and uh, it was attended by, I don't know, about a dozen folks in the audience. Three came to the podium to express, uh, actually, some very constructive criticism, which, of course, we don't comment at these meetings. We like the public to be, feel free and let us know what's on their minds. We understand that they can come before us on a Wednesday night, but sometimes it's not manageable their schedule, so we offer these additional public forums. Some of the constructive criticism we received was that they're very happy that we have expanded the pre-K program, but there are some transportation challenges. So, of course, something that was brought to our attention that we're definitely going to be addressing. Another suggestion was um, the mental health and how uh, we work in conjunction with the Access Center. Uh, security issues uh, to better our security options for students coming into the buildings. And one other par partner talked about relationships with other resources throughout the city, such as the Y, such as the Boys and Girls Club, and so forth and so on. So there were three folks that actually spoke, all very positive, but the best comment did not come to the podium, came to the table. It was a parent that was in the, in the audience that came up to the superintendent, I happened to be standing there, who commended one of our principals and says, this principal is the best person I've ever met in my life because she knows every children's name, is involved with the PTOs, and so forth and so on. So it, it was nice to, to hear that from someone that just happened to show up at the meeting, was there for a purpose, and want to express to the superintendent personally how much she appreciated the that, that principal at that school. And I know all our principals are worthy of that same credit, but it was a special event, and I think that was the highlight of my evening. And uh, that's what we covered at the Committee of the Whole. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Motion to accept the report. Second. second. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None opposed, so voted. Uh, we'll move on to new business, high school student advisory committee meeting date. Superintendent Cabral. Uh, so I should have more information on this uh, after uh, Mr. Pulowski and I. So Mr. Pulowski and I have connected. So we're, go we're gonna shoot for February 8th uh, where we're gonna hold our high school student advisory. And we're also gonna piggyback and cover the school improvement plans at the same time. So February 8th, high school advisory for the alternative high school and Taunton High School. And we'll also have the principals present their school improvement plans. Okay, thank you. Principals, budget priorities, meeting dates. Uh, so I will get back to the school committee with uh, some potential dates. So Mrs. Devine and myself, we're going to poll the school committee. We're thinking about doing the elementary uh, principals on one day or one evening and the middle school and high school principals on another evening, so six and six, so that we can kind of continue keeping things moving forward. Typically, they go over their budget narrative and they discuss their budget priorities for fiscal 24. And depending on how uh, things progress with our budget, if we can address some of those priorities, we'll address some of the priorities. But I think it's very important for the school board to hear what our principals feel they need to be successful, or for our students and staff to be successful in their schools. So Mrs. Devine and I will poll you regarding that information. Okay, thank you. And lastly, FY24 School Committee Budget Workshop. 
So again, we will pull the school committee. We have tentatively scheduled April 26th, which is an off Wednesday, as a school committee budget workshop. So again, we will pull the group. If we find that we need to alter or change this date, we'll change this date. But this will be the time when Mrs. Moynihan and I will bring to you uh, what we feel uh, is a number that we need uh, to roll our budget forward. And we'll discuss with you some of our budget priorities that have been discussed with the leadership team and with the principals, and we're also creating a budget priority survey, which is something that we, we got away from doing during COVID, but I wanna get back on track. So we also will be issuing a budget survey that we can, get, we can um, obtain stakeholder input and really identify what are those budget priorities that we need to put in place, or that if we can put in place for the next fiscal year. So again, more information to come on that. Okay, thank you. Uh, Chairman, Thank you, Mayor. Uh, so I, I just want to be clear for the audience at home that the school committee budget workshop is a public meeting. It will take place on April 26. It will be posted as all our meetings are posted. It will be on the school committee website. So just want to be clear that it is a public meeting, April 26, the school committee budget workshop date. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Sorry. Is that tentative Sorry, or is that... Well, I will want to make sure that everybody can attend, that we have a majority to attend. Okay. So we will confirm. The one thing I forgot to mention is we are going to schedule two community budget workshops. So in the past, we've had an AM workshop and a PM workshop. So on, I believe, it was, was it April 14th, Mrs.? Uh, what? February. <laughs> Thank you. I must have my birthday on my mind. So in February, on February 14th, there will be an AM budget workshop for the community. And on February 16th in the evening at 6 p.m., there will be a budget workshop where we'll go over our budget with, the, with the, anyone who's interested in attending from our community. Okay, thank you. Okay, we will move on then to unfinished business, an evaluation of the superintendent. I'll take that, Mayor. So uh, the evaluation superintendent is, has, is work in progress. It's a, quite a co comprehensive report. Secretary Fagan and I met last Friday for about two hours, and we have uh, started uh, compiling the information to present to the members for more input at another public meeting. But it's still work in progress and hope to have that uh, in the next February school committee meeting. Thank okay. you, Mayor. Thank you. Uh, school committee public forum, January 11th, 2023. I think you just. Yep, we've already went over covered that. that on the committee okay. of the whole. Thank you. Okay. Taunton Public Schools teacher vacancy update. Superintendent. So I apologize for not getting this into your packet on Friday, but you should have received it on the table. Mrs. Devine provided you with a two-page memo. So you have a cover memo with some information, and then I also provided you with a table of all our vacancies. So we're down to seven vacancies, and when you read the cover memo, the vacancies are being covered with either a long-term substitute teacher, a retiree, or a day-to-day -day sub. And the good news, uh, which is good news, I don't remember hearing this in many years, uh, we have currently 56 active daily substitute teachers, which is a lot for, for our district. So um, that's good news to show that we have bodies, um, you know, staff that can cover the classes should teachers be out ill. And so we, again, HR continues to do so, um, you know, the work that we need them to do to find highly qualified staff to cover these classes or to teach these classes, not just cover. Thank you. School committee of the whole meeting to review NESDEC report options. So th that's something that um, I'll work with the chair and the secretary to schedule an off Wednesday where we can refer this matter to the committee of the whole and, to be, and thoroughly review and discuss the options. Again, the, their options, we can, we can, the school committee can make a motion to authorize the school committee to explore some options, or we can continue to put this on pause as we're halfway through the year. So we can schedule that meeting and have a real thorough discussion regarding the options that were brought to us through the NESDEC facility and demographic study. Okay, and are there any action items to address? Chairman DeMello. Thank you, Mayor. So uh, as our members have in their school committee packet, a. Um, RFP, I believe it is, for the new public relations contract that we have authorized the superintendent to explore. Um, I, I've given this some serious thought, and uh, I, I think I, I, I'd like to incorporate this position into a position in the Taunton Public Schools. And I've shared some thoughts with the superintendent. I'd like the superintendent to uh, think about it and bring it to the committee to find out what your thoughts are about this. I believe that this person 
uh, not only would have the responsibility of everything that's outlined in the PR contract, but could do so much more uh, as a uh, catalyst within the school system between school buildings and the community. So uh, we've had very brief discussions, Superintendent. Uh, there's no rush to judgment here because the contract is not due back till the 30th of January, I believe it is on the RFP. But we, we, have, we, we have some continuation with the present firm on a, on a, uh, until the contract's up in February, correct? And we don't have to renew it. So I'd like to bring this uh, to the committee at the next meeting. Uh, the superintendent and I will sit down with Secretary Fagan and bring the thought process to all of you to maybe we can talk about this for our FY20, uh, FY24, right? Yes. To FY24 budget. That's my thought on that. So the RFP is in the packet. Thank you, Mayor. Okay. Thank you. Any comments? All right. There is no press here this evening. Yeah. Mayor, I'd like to revert back to an item uh, under new business um, okay. because we received today communication that I shared with everybody at the table regarding one of the public forums. So it does relate to the public forums that we've been speaking about and it relates to the 28th of September forum. Uh, again, we had uh, some, some good attendance. We had some constructive criticism, but today I'll leave out the name. Uh, it's addressed to Mr. Corral, Mr. DeMello. I want to reach back out to you and personally thank you for the emphasis that has been placed on solving the special education issues that had me deeply concerned at the beginning of the school year. We have seen marked progress resolving the issues experienced at blank school and as I reached out to you personally for help, it is also my moral obligation to extend my sincere appreciation. So the school committee forums work. This happened on the 20th of September. Just today, we received the response from one of the parents that was very concerned that day before us. So, want to share that with the committee. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Nice to hear. Thank you for sharing. Could I get a motion, motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None opposed. So voted. Thank you very much, everyone. Have a good evening. Great.